Uh, excuse me. What do you think you're doing? No, you you know the rules, right? You're allowed on the table unless I'm reviewing something. Then you're not allowed on here because you'll probably try and eat it. Or worse. Come on. <clears throat> yes, yes, I know you want to be in the video, okay? But I just can't risk you breaking these things. And I know, yes, there's going to be a lot of complaints, okay? I will probably have half my subscriber base outside my front door with burning pitchforks within the hour. Anyway, on a different topic, do you like me funky effect colour on the wall? Yeah, that's made with that light there. Which incidentally is the same as this light panel here. Which is incidentally what I'm reviewing today. The 560 AS from Great Video Maker. Now don't be fooled, just because it has the word video in the title, I've actually found that this works pretty well, not just for video, but also for some stills aspects as well. Normally that light is turned to face me and act as more of a fill light, but I wanted it set up like that today with the stripes on the wall, more to highlight a couple of aspects of this light later on in the review. Although I am starting to really like the look of it now, so I might end up keeping it, who knows. The kit that GVM were kind enough to send me consisted of these two LED light panels and two of the GVM tripods in a pretty nice GVM carry case. The case is actually really handy for if you want to use these lights to go and shoot on location somewhere. So you get felt pouches for each light panel. The case has indentation cutouts for those panels to sit into. You then get a dividing partition and space above that for the light stands to fit in, which also have their own felt case, and then room for the power connectors and everything else to go with it. And these light stands are pretty decent quality as well. They're not quite full-blown heavy-duty light stands, but they're significantly better than what we'll refer to as the eBay special light stands that are quite commonly available. Now, moving on to the light panels themselves. These are pretty decent light panels, to be fair. They are a 10 by 10 inch, 30 watt, bi-color panel with a color temperature range of 2300 Kelvin up to 6800 Kelvin. Now, this can be powered either by batteries using the Sony NPFs, so you can take it out on location, you're not constrained to needing mains power, and using 970 model batteries will give you approximately four hours worth of runtime. Now, there's worth noting, the reason there's two battery compartments on the back is because you need two batteries to run it because it's a 15 volt panel. Or you can use it as I've generally been using it, which is as a mains power. And this is where we come to problem number one for me of this panel, which is the mains plug. So you have a fairly standard heavy duty power cable that runs power from the mains to a transformer box. You then have a thinner cable that runs from the transformer block to plugging into the light, except this is not particularly long. Less than four foot. And where I found this presents a problem is the fact that if your light is then anything more than four feet off the floor, this plug is essentially dangling in midair, which is what is happening right there right now. Even though the light is only coming up to about here on me, the block itself isn't actually touching the floor, which even though this has got a 90 degree connector, is still surely putting unnecessary strain on the power plug. So that's really complaint number one, and honestly is the biggest complaint I have about this panel. Now, overall design, we have an aluminium back chassis, which is great because this acts as a passive cooling system, which means the light doesn't get particularly hot, because it's constantly being cooled, but because it's passive cooling, there's no fans running, unlike my main key light at the moment, which has got a fan constantly rattling in my ear. These things run absolutely silent, which honestly, when I first saw that, I really wanted to use this as my main two light setup. Unfortunately, problem number two with this light is the lack of diffusion options. Now you do get a small Perspex diffusion panel, which slides in behind the barn doors, and just helps soften the light a little bit. But honestly, it doesn't really do that much. It's not like having an umbrella or a softbox. But I have found the included diffusion panel a little bit of a pain to get in and out at times because of the U-shaped bracket, there's these tension nuts on the side. But if the nut happens to tighten at the wrong angle relative to the light, 
it then blocks your access to get the diffusion panel in and out. Unfortunately, being such a big LED light panel, there's no option of a softbox. The only alternative would be an umbrella, but this bracket doesn't have an umbrella holder on there, which is a little bit disappointing. But one aspect of this bracket that I do really like, despite the fact that it doesn't have an umbrella holder, is the fact that you can mount it not only in the traditional stance like that straight above the light stand, but there's actually a second cutout that lets you mount this bracket perpendicular to the light stand which is brilliant because it gives you more flexibility in how you can angle the light. Where I've been doing some product photos, it's great to have an overhead light, whereas normally the best you could get is a light stand near the product and the light coming in on an angle. Given how bright it is, I've even been using it for shooting portraits, mainly my thumbnails and pictures of the dog, Obviously, they're not going to be great for outdoors in broad daylight trying to combat the power of the sun. But if you're shooting, say, at nighttime outside or indoors where you've got low levels of light, they do work really well. The power level at 100% is pretty bright, able to go up to about 3,800 lumens at a half a meter. However, it's only able to wind down to 10% brightness, which does present a couple of problems. Firstly, it means that is as dim as the light gets, so it's not brilliant for really dark scenes when you want to be very meticulous with the amount of light you've got. It would have been so much better if this could go right the way down to 1%. The second problem is that the way they've designed this light panel, as you can probably tell from the way the light's casting off from this panel, is they've basically got alternating rows of yellow LEDs and white LEDs. So the yellow LEDs are the 2300 Kelvin bulbs and the white ones are the 6800 Kelvin. When you're at say 2300 Kelvin, you've got only the yellow LEDs on and none of the white. When you then go to 2400 Kelvin, you get the whites kicking in at 10% brightness. So you get a very sudden jump in color temperature. It's only for the first and last 100 Kelvins as the respective rows of LEDs either switch on or switch off. Anyway, moving on to the controls at the back. I like the design at the back of this because it's just very simplistic. So they've not even gone with a fancy display that gives you all the information at one time. There's just a simple two digit display. So it, it doesn't even show 100% brightness. It caps out at 99. Now, just to help clear up any confusion. So you're not thinking, is that 4,500 Kelvin or 45% power? They've then included little green LEDs next to it. So when you turn the temperature dial, it turns on this green LED, which says 00K to let you know that this is 4,500 Kelvin. And then if you turn this dial, it switches the green LED over to this one, so you know it's 65% power. And you'll also note, finally, that there's a little button here that says Wi-Fi reset. And that's because these lights actually have Wi-Fi in them that let you connect your phone via the GVM app and control these remotely. Unless I'm missing something, it appears you can only control one light at a time. So you have to connect your phone's Wi-Fi to one of your uh, devices. You can customize the namings on these so you know which light is which, but you connect your phone to that particular light. You can then change the settings and turn the light on and off all you like. But if you then want to change the settings on a different light panel, you have to go into the switch Wi-Fi option and move your phone's Wi-Fi to that light, connect up to that light, then change the settings. And honestly, with the amount of time it takes to have to switch the Wi-Fi's, select the options and so on and so forth, if the lights are kind of ground level or pretty accessible, it's easy to just walk over to it and change the settings. The only time I can really see it being a true benefit is if you've got the light in a more obscure, hard to reach place. Like if it was stuck up on the ceiling somewhere, then sure, it's probably more convenient to just try and control it through the app rather than try and get up there to change the settings. For me, I think I'd much rather would have seen a facility where you could link all of the lights to a master light panel and then connect to that which would at the very least allow you to sync all of your lights onto one lot of settings, but would have been even better if you could then select individual lights to change the settings and the command would just go from the app to your master light and then off to the relevant secondary. That would have been more ideal, but unfortunately that is not the case. 
So my only real complaints of this light panel, the app works, but doesn't seem to have much benefit. The color temperature, the sudden jumps at the, the extreme ends can be quite noticeable, but again, for the most part, probably isn't going to affect that many people. The restricted ability of adding light modifiers and diffusers to it, really the biggest complaint though is this power cable. But other than that, these are very good performing lights. They feel very well built. They have very good brightness, decent color range, nice and easy to control, and a fantastic heating system. And in terms of pricing, they are available in a range of different options. This particular setup that GVM have sent me, the two light panels with the two stands, and currently that's retailing for £240 UK or around $230 US. So if you're interested in these light panels, there are some links in the description down below. If you have any questions or queries, leave them in the comment box down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and also consider supporting this channel through my Patreon account as well. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video. You want the dog back now, don't you? People want to see you, dog. They don't even care about me. They only come here to see you. Honestly, I could leave and they'll still watch. <laughs>